Hi, I'm going to talk on Ruth chapter 3 today. So let me just start by reading that chapter to you. One day, Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you, where you will be well provided for. Now Boaz, with whose women you have worked, is a relative of ours. Tonight he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash, put on perfume and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying and go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking, he was in good spirits. He went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned and there was a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. The Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All the people of my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am a guardian redeemer of our family, there is another who is more closely related than I am. Stay here for the night and in the morning, if he wants to do his duty as your guardian redeemer, good, let him redeem you. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognised. And he said, no one must know that a woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, bring me the shawl you are wearing and hold it out. When she did so, he poured in six measures of barley and placed the bundle on her. Then he went back to town. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, how did it go, my daughter? Then she told her everything Boaz had done for her and added, he gave me these six measures of barley saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty handed. Then Naomi said, wait my daughter until you find out what happens for the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. Let's just pray before I speak. Lord, we thank you for these words from Ruth. We thank you for the past couple of weeks and all that we've heard so far on this book. Lord, uh, be with me as I bring these words now. And Lord, I pray that you're with everybody who's watching or listening to this, that you will open their hearts and their minds to hear your word. And Lord, I ask that everything I speak comes from you. Amen. this is a really interesting chapter uh, some might even consider it shocking Ruth does a lot of unexpected and risky things here under the instruction of Naomi I think it's also quite beautiful and shows how much trust Ruth has in Naomi and in her faith we start the chapter with Naomi speaking to Ruth about finding her a home somewhere that she will be well provided and in Hebrew, it can also be translated as finding rest. As we have heard in previous chapters, both women have lost their husbands and for Naomi, that meant her sons too. We know that it was much harder for women to live alone in those times with no provider than it is now. And we also know that the women are foreigners. They're not in their own land, they're living in a new place. And uh, Ruth is following a new God. She's now chosen to stay with Naomi and uh, do what she does, believe what she believes and follow who she follows. And they both show incredible bravery and loyalty and faith 
trust and obedience. We see Naomi mention Boaz again, who we met in chapter two, and we've heard that he is a relative and a guardian redeemer, which is the legal term for someone with an obligation to redeem a relative in difficulty. Ruth has already been working in Boaz's field with the other women, and he is already aware of her character and her loyalty. The next bit that we read um, is what many might consider a risky move, um, as a bit of biblical flirting perhaps going on. She is told to wash and put on perfume and wear her best clothes and go to the threshing floor. Now, getting washed and dressed nicely and maybe putting on a bit of perfume is probably something that most of us have done at some point um, before going on a date uh, with a with a spouse or trying to to win your spouse over um, before before the wedding or whatever. Um, it's it's a normal thing to do, isn't it? To, to get dressed up, to look nice, to smell nice, to be presentable. We like to look our best maybe for the person that we would like to be with. Um, but he's also already seen her working in the fields, so perhaps it's also a sign of respect as well as to be presentable to a possible husband and provider. She is told to note the place where Boaz is lying, presumably as to not lie down next to the wrong person in the dark. Um, and then she's told to uncover his feet and lie down. Now, there's a couple of different interpretations of this. There seems to be a lot of discussion from scholars or theologians as to whether this is a literal act of uncovering his feet or something else, whether it's a bold seduction move that um, Naomi has suggested um, or, or Ruth simply just honouring their customs and this is her way of um, expressing her desire to marry Boaz. I'll let you decide what you think um, ab about that. Either way, it gets his attention and he asks, who are you, when he suddenly uh, wakes up and she replies with, I am your servant, Ruth. Um, she then says, spread the corner of your garment over me since you are guardian redeemer of our family. This is such a lovely act. I think there's something really gentle and loving in, in this request and in this next move um, to cover someone in your garment. It makes me think of tucking a child in to bed at night or looking after a loved one, maybe tucking them under a blanket if they're unwell. It's an incredibly caring thing to do. But it also highlights um, a bit of the blessing that Boaz speaks over Ruth in the previous chapter when he says, may the Lord repay you for what you've done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. And we hear about being under the shadow of the Lord's wings a few times in the Bible. Um, but it's just this really striking image of protection to be to be covered by somebody's wings, to be looked after and protected in, in that way. You think of obviously like newborn chicks, birds, baby birds, um, and that, you know, the parents are protective of that. But obviously this image that we see over and over again in the Bible of being protected under the shadow of the Lord's wings. Um, and and Ruth being covered by the corner of Boaz's garment really speaks of that same image of protection. Although the book of Ruth never really states that God is speaking through Naomi to Ruth, I believe that that is what's happening. Naomi gives such clear instructions to Ruth that many people might think are a bit strange actually when you read when you read it it's it's not a normal thing to do or to hear um they're quite bold instructions and Ruth could obviously have got into quite a lot of trouble um should anyone have found her at the threshing floor and I think both hers and Naomi's faith is just really clear in the following of these instructions 
that God's hand is definitely at work in this in this story in in these events that were happening that both of those women are safely under the protection of the Lord's wings. So in this act of Ruth visiting Boaz at the threshing floor, we acknowledge this as her proposal. However, Boaz can't yet agree to marry Ruth. She proposed because he is a relative of her late husband and she's asked him to marry her, presumably so that she can um, he can provide a son um, with her who can inherit her late husband's property and also perhaps remove some shame from Naomi who's lost her husband and both sons but Boaz is aware of a, a nearer relation a closer relative who has the first right of refusal um, for Ruth um, besides besides that he's he is naturally protective of Ruth and he doesn't want to risk harming her reputation by allowing others to think that anything has gone on between the two of them and so obviously Boaz tells Ruth to wait until early in the morning when any late night stragglers anybody that um, might have been left on the field perhaps it was their last day of, of threshing and winnowing and um, they were all celebrating the, the crop or whatever um, but waiting for the last few to fall asleep so that the way will be clear for her to return to Naomi's house in Bethlehem without being recognized by anyone or accosted and again we see we see Boaz protecting Ruth before before she leaves, he, he asks her to bring him her shawl and hold it out, which he then fills with six measures of barley, which is, again, more provision from Boaz. I just, I love this book of Ruth. When uh, Mike asked if we were up for doing a chapter each over the summer, I was really excited about it because it's one of my absolute favourites in the Bible. I'm quite a romantic, and I think this is definitely a bit of a biblical love story, that we see unfold, even though there's an element of uh, duty with the guardian redeemer and, and everything, I think there's something so loving and gentle about the interactions between Boaz and Ruth. And I do find myself rooting for them a bit as a couple and not wanting this other relative, this other guardian redeemer to agree to marry Ruth, uh, which I will leave to Helen to talk about next next week. Not wanting to give away any spoilers, unless, of course, you've already read the, the Bible. Um, but she returns to Naomi and, and she tells her everything that Boaz has done. That she wasn't allowed to return empty-handed. And Naomi ends the chapter by telling her that she won't have long to wait, really, because Boaz will want everything sorted out as quickly as possible after Ruth's proposal and the visit to the threshing floor. And there are two words that have really struck me and stuck in my mind whilst preparing this talk, and I've repeated them a few times, but um, the words are provision and protection. I think they've really spoken to me the most in this chapter. Boaz is consistent with his provision and his protection of Ruth, just as God is to us, just as God, God shows to us. And Ruth and Naomi have faith and trust in the Lord and he provides, you know, everything sort of goes to plan, um, doesn't it, in this chapter as it goes along and it could quite easily not have. Um, but yeah, those are, those are my thoughts on this chapter. So um, I'm just going to pray to finish and then there'll be some questions again at the end. Father God, we just thank you for this chapter from Ruth. We thank you um, for your provision and your protection over us in our lives daily. And Lord, we, we thank you for this reminder of that in this part of the story of Ruth and Naomi and, and Boaz and in everything that happens. Lord, I ask that uh, you continue to prompt us to think about this, to be reminded of your constant provision and protection, to be grateful, Lord. And we just thank you for being our guardian, our redeemer, our protection and our provider. Amen.
Thank you.